Reverend JJ, back at the Lotus Lounge. Hope everybody's doing okay. It's Friday here, uh, October 29th, and I have one appointment today, and I'm hoping to go to the pool, and I got some champagne and some orange juice, and I was going to go chill at the pool and have a glass of champagne, and I made these um, ice cubes where I put... Um, raspberries and blueberries and blackberries. I did like different ones. Like one has a blackberry, one has um, raspberries and blueberries. I think one just had a blueberry. But I put them in ice cube trays so that way I could like put that in the drink. So I thought that was kind of cool. But I want to do this episode in regards to alcohol. So it's rather ironic that even today I'm having a mimosa. And I don't drink. So I the last time I think I had a drink, I mean, I think it was when I went out for my birthday. And I only had a couple of drinks. So lots of things have happened to me in regards to alcohol, and I've shared that on here. Um, I've had several... Uh, sexual assault incidents that occurred with alcohol being involved and alcohol runs in my family Um, there's some pretty serious things that have happened my aunt she um, drank really heavily for many years and uh, lost relationships with her kids my cousins and she actually died Uh, related to alcohol Um, she had liver issues and uh, I believe it would be cirrhosis of the liver and they took her off the transplant list because she was still drinking so something happened um, because you know I'm in a different state and uh, this is kind of, you know, fresh. This has happened in the last few years. I don't have the exact date. But um, she abruptly stopped drinking. And the withdrawal of the um, detox symptoms that she was having pretty much killed her. Uh, she was living with my grandma. And um, they found her. And it was, it was pretty bad. Um, my sister, I think is drinking a lot. Uh, I was told, uh, and this was over a year ago. Um, so I don't really know if this is exactly how it is currently. Um, but I've been around her and she drinks a lot of vodka and, um, people have complained to me about it. Uh, I don't want to get into too much detail. I don't think she even listens to my podcast, but um, I don't want to create any other problems. So I know she is uh, drinking and justifies it and says that it's okay because, you know, our grandma said that, you know, we should be able to do whatever we want to do. We shouldn't have to, you know, change ourselves for others, you know, being true and authentic, which is, which is correct. But if there's something that you're doing that's interfering with your relationships, that might be something to reevaluate. So I also talked to my dad recently. It was his birthday and I haven't talked to him in quite some time. And he was a little tipsy. And this is kind of how our conversations have been before. Uh, Part of the reason why I don't call because it's just blabbering on tangents about things that like just don't make a whole lot of sense and you know I listened to him and and the conversation actually I think went pretty well but I kept having to redirect it back to like the topic at hand because he would go off on something and I mean I was on the phone with him for an hour and 45 minutes like we talked for almost two hours so it was a pretty lengthy discussion but a lot of it was just him talking at me about stuff that is just 
I don't know, like important, but not important. There's other things I wanted to talk about. And um, it's just really hard to be able to talk about what I want to discuss, like, you know, my kids, which is his grandchildren, you know, how they're doing, what's going on with that. Like, I want to talk about real stuff. And it just tends to be sometimes superficial. So I actually talked to him uh, the other day. And he said he went over to his friends and had a couple of beers because it was his birthday. And I just wanted to kind of bring this up, too, because he said several times anti-vaxxer. And I called him on his birthday, so I wasn't going to do anything to jeopardize that. Plus, he was drinking, so I also didn't want to create a problem because he wasn't in his right mind um, and, you know, under the influence. So I didn't want to have, like, this whole big blowout. But he said it several times, anti-vaxxer. And he was talking about the Alexas. And I said, you know those Alexas listen to you, right? And he wanted to argue with me. And he even tried to prove his point by saying, Alexa, are you listening to my conversation? And then it came on and said that they only share information with Amazon when they're uh, instructed to and, you know, giving authority or something like that. I don't remember the exact words, but I'm like, so then he says, people that believe that when the Alexa is off and she's still listening, it's still listening, they're anti-vaxxers. And I'm like, what? What? Just because somebody has a different belief system about technology and may have some different thoughts on that, it doesn't mean they're an anti-vaxxer. It just means they think for themselves. So, yeah, my dad's going to freak out when Trump comes back because Trump is coming back, whether anybody wants to believe me or not. Uh, It's happening. It's happening. Lots of things are happening. But this episode, I'm going to share a little bit about my alcohol use and how it's impacted some things in addition to what I've already shared on here. And as you can see, alcohol has impacted my family. The energetic risks of alcohol, when you're consuming alcohol, It creates mini puncture wounds in your auric field, in your aura. And your aura is comprising of your energetic and your membrane. And weakening your spiritual defenses. So when you're consuming alcohol, it's disconnecting your ability to defend yourself spiritually. When a higher vibrational being drinks alcohol in tandem with going to a lower frequency environment where dense, disembodied, earthbound spirits hang out, they become a magnet for the dark energies. Be cautious about what you feed your system when and where. So alcohol permits dark energies to enter your auric field. Sometimes people have said that they can possess you. So the alcohol will allow darkness to seep in. And that's why they call it spirits. Have you seen that before where you go to a um, store to buy alcohol and it's labeled as spirits and there's a reason for that because they're dark energy spirits and it's coming into your own um, energy. So the alcohol will break down your ability to defend yourself from those dark spirits. <clears throat> so 
So the first thing that goes when you drink is your judgment. That's the reason why when um, people are drinking, and I've been guilty of this as well, when people drink, they think they can drive. It's your judgment that's off, and it's telling you that you're okay. Judgment causes problems. People get into arguments. They misunderstand, misinterpret things. Heavy drinking alcohol can cause depression. It causes impulsive behaviors. It causes agitation. It resurfaces memories from trauma. It causes anxiety. People can become suicidal. We become dependent. There's a loss of your inhibition. That's why... There's a tendency sometimes for people to have sex with somebody that they might not have sex with when they're sober. Um, Or, you know, it allows you to kind of let loose and be a little freer, a little carefree. That's the inhibition. And there can be episodes of self-harm. So I want to share some of my own personal experiences with alcohol on here. And I'm going to be a little vulnerable but, you know, I did used to work in a psychiatric hospital. And there were a lot of people that came into the psych hospital that were alcohol-related problems. Um, you know, people broke up with their girlfriend, their boyfriend. They were drinking. Uh, this one chick drove her car off of a causeway. This one guy, um, alcohol-related, he doused himself with, al- with um, gas, gasoline, and he lit himself on fire. Um, I had uh, another guy that had alcohol related, um, issue and broke up with his girlfriend or she broke up with him and he literally slit his wrist. I'm sorry. He slit his throat. I do have other people that have cut their wrists, um, because of alcohol. So alcohol permits darkness to come into one's world. And I shared on here before um, that I had a sexual assault at a fraternity where an alcohol was related. Um, I had a spring break episode where there was a sexual assault where alcohol was related. Currently, I have an allergy to alcohol. I don't think I've shared this. Um, But my body no longer... accepts alcohol into my system. It's a toxin. And alcohol is a poison. So I have this allergy that um, I'm allergic to sulfates. And sulfates is um, like a form of sulfur, which is strange because we all have sulfur in our body. It's an element um, that is needed. So I acquired this allergy uh, somewhat over time but basically it means I'm allergic to anything that is fermented and alcohol, beer, wine it's fermented so there's something going on there in the process of making alcohol that I'm allergic to sounds ridiculous so when I do drink I get really hot hot in my body flushed My face gets red. My ears get really warm. And I usually get a headache. So drinking doesn't tend to end up being a whole lot of fun for me. Excuse me. Drinking doesn't end up being fun for me. It's first thing in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm a little phlegmy as usual. But um, it's a poison in my body. So I can drink organic wine, organic beer, because there's something that's done different with the process of making it. But if you've ever looked at a bottle of wine, you'll see on it that it says contains sulfates. 
So if the wine says that, I can't drink it. Um, I mean, I can drink it. It's not going to kill me, but I'm going to get hot, red, a headache, and then I get flushed. And then, you know, and, you know, alcohol dehydrates people. It's why people that drink heavily also have broken sleep because you're dehydrated. So that's also, you know, a contributing thing that happens when people drink alcohol. It dehydrates your body. So I'm permitted to drink beer and wine that's organic. And I can actually drink silver tequila. But I am going to the pool today and I do plan on having mimosas. Uh, I haven't had mimosas in forever. And I'm hoping one of my girlfriends is going to come hang out with me this weekend also at the pool. So I thought I would get a bottle of champagne and um, some orange juice and do that. And then I did the ice cube trays with fruit in them that I thought I would add to the mimosa. I'm probably going to have a headache, um, but I'm going to just kind of suffer through because I still kind of want to have some fun, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. I do enjoy the taste of champagne. I do like me some bubbly. But I'll be responsible. So I want to share a couple of times that I had some issues with alcohol. And I mean, let's set the stage. I started drinking when I was 12. I was in whatever that is, sixth, seventh grade, middle school, 12 years old is when I started drinking. And I would drink with my other friends and my one girlfriend, her dad, he worked the overnight shift. So we would go hang out there and we would get wasted. We would drink Cisco. I don't know if anybody remembers Cisco. Um, Her uncle would get the alcohol for us. And... If anybody's been listening to the continuation of episodes at 12 years old is when um, this guy, Jason, who's now dead, but Jason forced me to give him a blowjob. And I imagine that trauma probably contributed to my alcohol use at such an early age. And then, you know, after that traumatic experience happened, I was also beaten by my dad for having boys in the house so I got in trouble for that also so I never even like you know talked to my dad about it he ended up finding out years later and he asked me why I didn't tell him and it's like um I didn't tell you because you beat the crap out of me after this happened and I was confused and I didn't even understand what had happened I was still so young so that pretty much launched my alcohol use. So I drank. I drank mostly through middle school. Um, I didn't drink at school. It was always a weekend thing. Um, I didn't really drink much during the week either. I was pretty responsible. Um, You know, I I got school work done. Uh, I stayed under the radar. That's the whole thing. Like, I remember spiking my um, punch at one of my birthdays. And... I just had friends over and I don't even know where like the parents were. There was no parents. We were living with my grandma because I lived with my grandma for most of my um, childhood. Uh, as I've shared before, it's lots of times I've lived with her. And I spiked the punch with my grandpa's alcohol and we all got drunk at my birthday party. And I think I was like 13. And nobody was there. There were no parents there. Like, I don't even remember any adults being there. Like, I think my grandparents were in the house, but like we were all outside and I don't even know. And I stole my, my grandpa's alcohol and I dumped it in my punch. So that was that. When I got older, I would get blackout drunk and I remember having a party at my dad's. Um, He was gone and I was 17. And I remember running around 
the house, like literally running around the house. <laughs> and I had money in my bra and <clears throat> we're all having fun, but I had money in my bra. And then like the next morning I went outside and at least the money was on the ground still. Like nobody stole it or anything, but I, it's just, just careless. So I also remember another time that, um, a little bit older, I think I was like 1920 and at another party and we were drinking um, doing shots of Goldschlager, which I would never touch this Goldschlager liquor ever again in my life. But I, again, got completely wasted, and there was a guy that I was there with, and I told him I was going to go sit in his car, and he's like, don't throw up in my car. I'm like, I'm not going to throw up. Dude. I threw up everywhere in that car. He had a stick shift, manual shift, and there was vomit all over the stick shift. It was horrifically embarrassing. Absolutely disgusting. I am repulsed and disgusted with myself for acting that way. So alcohol has definitely uh, interfered with some ways of how I feel about myself because I've made some poor choices and judgment, the first thing that goes when you drink. So there's also a time that I went to Las Vegas and you know, they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So I had gone there with my ex-husband. He wanted to go play poker and he wanted to bring the kids and he offered to pay for all of us to fly out there because he wanted to go play in a poker tournament. but wanted to show the kids Vegas, which they were little. I I don't even remember exactly. I'm thinking maybe my oldest was like 10, which would have made my youngest seven because there's three years between them. So I'm kind of guessing on that age, but I think that's right about where we were. Like it might have even been eight. My oldest might have been eight. So I don't even remember. We ended up going to Circus Circus. Um, you know, we did some of the family things. We went to the pools. Um, I've Both times I've gone out to Las Vegas, I've stayed at the N- MGM Grand, and I absolutely adore it and love it. I do um, want to go back, and I will likely stay at MGM. Um, I love how they have the lions there, and they have amazing restaurants, and there's an awesome buffet that's there. And there's a Starbucks, and, you know, Club 54 is there. And it's just, MGM is an amazing hotel. If you ever go out there, that's the place to stay. I mean, obviously there's other nice hotels, but that's my favorite. And I love the Lazy River that they have there. They've got several pools. There's a spa. Um, I think even there's a Nickelodeon thing that was in MGM. There's an arcade there. So, you know, the kids went to the arcade. So, you know, we go out there. It's my first time ever going out to Las Vegas. So I never experienced it before. And, um, just had a, we had a, we had a pretty decent time, um, even though we were divorced, <laughs> but, um, I ended up going out by myself and cause you know, he wasn't much of a drinker and then the kids, you know, they stayed with him in the hotel and I went out partying. So I went to club 54, which was a club that was in the hotel. I met this guy, um, and I ended up going back to his hotel. Yeah. Really fucking smart idea for some chick to go with uh, some stranger that she doesn't even know. And nothing ended up happening because I got so sick at his apartment, he pretty much kicked me out and he told me to leave. So I ended up losing the hotel key in the midst of all of this happening. So the only way I can get into my room is to go to the front desk. So it's like three in the morning and I'm probably looking 
horrendous. I was throwing up at this guy's hotel for God knows how long. I don't even know how I got back to MGM. So I have to go to the front desk. My name's not on the room because it was under my ex-husband's name. So the hotel security has to fucking walk me up to the room, knock on the door to make sure that that's my room. So we knock on the door and my son, Jacob, answers. And I feel humiliated that I exposed him to that. And I ended up in the bathroom again and I was continuing to throw up. So not really a very good memory for my child to see their mom totally wasted in Las Vegas. And who knows if I even had all my stuff, my shoes, and I don't even know. But yeah, that wasn't a very good experience. Alcohol is a poison. It's a toxin. And it's ironic that alcohol is legal because there's more problems that happen when people are under the influence of alcohol um, than, you know, marijuana, who, which is not legal officially anyway. Some areas it is, but medicinally it is. Um, some places it is recreational as well depends on where you live, but you can get alcohol anywhere as long as you're 21, you know, even in Florida where I am, you can get alcohol in the convenience stores. Uh, where I used to live, you had to go to a packy store. We called it a packy package store. Like you had to go to an actual, like it was a liquor locker. You had to go to a place that sold beer and liquor. Um, But in Florida, you can get beer and wine in a convenience store. (laughs) So, yeah, it's pretty readily available. Lots of crimes occur under the influence of alcohol. So, I got arrested and charged for a DUI when I was 30, uh, just after my divorce. And it was prom night in the town that I was, you know, living in. So I didn't go to the prom. Um, I was older, but it was prom night in the town. So when it's prom night, cops are a lot more prevalent. So I was hanging out with this chick that I knew from work. And we were drinking and had some margaritas. And she was married. And her husband wanted to go home with me. And I agreed to it. And she was okay with it too. They had an open marriage. So she was wasted drunk. And she, after we were going, uh, after we went out, she went home. And she said that it was okay. I mean, I wasn't married. I didn't have anybody. She permitted her husband to go home with me. So we were in my car and we're driving and I was driving and um, I started drinking water closer to the end of the evening so that I could start to sober up. Uh, I was trying to be responsible, but I was speeding. I was listening to corn and um, loud music blaring, speeding down the street and I got pulled over. And the guy that I'm with cops an attitude with the officer and says something to the cop about how he doesn't have to show her his ID. So that doesn't probably help my situation anymore because he wasn't following any directions from the officer. So she has me get out of the car. I'm in these platform shoes that I can barely stand up in. 
and uh, asked if I could take my shoes off, and she said no, so that wasn't good. And um, <clears throat> I'm also blind in my left eye, and that affects my peripheral vision and potentially can impact my balance. So, yeah. Walking a straight line? Nope, didn't do very well. I failed the sobriety test that she gave. And then they did a breathalyzer. And I think I blew is like a 0. 0.1, 0. 0.12, I think, something like that. Like So 0. 0.08 is the legal limit. So I was a little over. Um, so I, I got arrested. They at least permitted me to call somebody to come get my car. So I was able to do that. So they didn't tow my vehicle. And I ended up, I had never been arrested before. This is the first time ever. And um, it was just horrible. Horrible experience in the holding cell. And there was two other people in there with me. And... Just not a good good experience. So I got ROR'd. I was released of my own recognizance at about 6 in the morning. And um, I hired a lawyer. And the lawyer was able to make a deal. And I got a year probation. Which after 6 months I was able to um, terminate the probation. And I did. Uh, I had to do community service. I did that at the Goodwill. That's an interesting experience. And my charge got dropped down to a lesser charge. It was a reckless driving rather than an actual DUI. So I I was charged with the DUI, but I didn't get um, convicted of the DUI. It was just a a traffic infraction. So, I mean, that was good. But clearly it was obviously a learning experience. I had to go to AA meetings. Um, I had to do counseling. And... The therapist that I had was amazing. And she, at that time, I had already had my master's in counseling. So she even said to me, you can co-lead this group with me. She goes, I know you have the knowledge. So like, she didn't want me to go through the same group counseling that everybody else was doing because she knew that I already knew all this stuff. Um, Because I had already, I had studied substance abuse Um, I was qualified to do counseling with people that had substance abuse issues. So she allowed me to get one-on-one counseling to work on some of my issues. And it was a blessing. My arrest was a blessing in disguise. So I'm sharing this with you and I'm saying this also, you know, being very transparent and and raw here and kind of letting you into my world too. I was very thankful for the opportunity to have that counseling at that time. I was not making good choices. And I mean, taking a married guy home with me, I mean, yeah, that, you know, whatever. I mean, nothing ever came out of that. And I actually ended up stopping being friends with that girl. Um, She came to work smelling of alcohol and um, she threw up in the bathroom because she had a night of drinking and that just didn't sit very well with me and I'm not judging anybody at all but we have to remember that we choose our friends and I didn't want to choose to be around another professional that was acting in such a way <clears throat> that I felt was unethical. There, are, There's ethical stuff there. And, and I even questioned my, some of my own ethics at that time in my life and my own morals because of some of the things that I had done too. So I, I'm not pointing a finger. I'm just saying I made a choice for myself to not continue to be around that. Um, so we stopped being friends. <clears throat> We worked with children. We were therapists for kids at that time. 
and you can't be a therapist and be modeling what is the you know right behaviors if you yourself are not engaging and practicing the same things that you're trying to teach I mean even the kids that we worked with had substance abuse problems so I um, I ended up stopped being friends with her and I, I don't really know what happened to her I knew she started working in the jail um, she got in trouble at the job that we were at together because of the alcohol So here I am now, 45. I barely drink. Um, I am going to have my little mimosa. I mean, I have one bottle of champagne. Um, I used to drink bottles of champagne (laughs) when I was drinking. So I'm going to chill and relax at the pool with a couple of mimosas. And I'm going to be very responsible I'm also in the comfort of my own home I don't drink and drive at all anymore I don't even have alcohol in my house Um, it's not something that's regular for us at all my oldest he turned 21 and he got some um Mike's Hard Lemonade or some kind of White Claw, (laughs) which those to me sound kind of girly for drinks. But, um, like, he doesn't want to taste beer. He doesn't think it smells good. He doesn't like the taste of it, whatever. So he ends up drinking those things. And it also gives him a headache. So I wouldn't be surprised if he has a similar allergy that I have. But, um, this is my alcohol stories, and there's a lot more, but it runs in my family. It's a genetic predisposition that alcohol can be a problem, and it's clearly a problem in my life. Uh, It's a problem in my sister's life. Uh, It's possibly a problem in my dad's life. And it was definitely a problem for my aunt. It killed her. So be careful when you are taking in the spirits of alcohol because darkness can seep in. And I've been doing a lot of work on maintaining peace and drama-free lifestyle, which means I also have to make good choices. So I wanted to, I've been meaning to do this alcohol episode for a while, and I just wanted to kind of share a little bit of what my life was like with the usage of alcohol. And it is a toxin, it is a poison, and it's not good for you. And some people are saying that alcohol actually causes cancer. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, cigarettes are contributors to cancer, and that's okay. You can buy those anywhere. Alcohol is readily available in many ways. So we're living in this inverted, fucked up world that good is bad and bad is good. And I wouldn't be surprised to find out if there's new information that comes out that supports that alcohol causes cancer. That's just me speculating. Um, I saw that somewhere. I don't remember where I saw it. I I don't have the um, research evidence to back that up. But that's my opinion. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if alcohol is a contributor for cancer in one's body. 
So stay healthy. Stay in your heart center. Be loving and peaceful. And do your best to not escape from your own reality by using substances. Alcohol is a mask to cover up your own traumas or your own negative feelings that you are suppressing. You know, it's easy to get sober. It's difficult to maintain sobriety. Anybody can stop drinking. But can you keep that going for a length of time so you can clear your mind and do what's right? So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And it was kind of difficult talking with my dad the other day when he just kind of rambled on. And I had to be really patient there. And I did because I still love my father. I just don't always like all of his behaviors. Same thing with my sister. So, hope all is well. I hope you guys hang in there. Shit's about to get even crazier here in this world that we're in. So, get prepared. It's coming. You know, it was my dad's birthday when I talked to him and I wanted to just kind of leave with this because the last thing that I wanted to say that I chose not to say is happy birthday. Trump is still the president. Good night. That's what I really wanted to say. So I used my voice on here and this is the reason why I created this podcast was so I could have my own outlet. So, believe it or not, it's about to get overturned, and shit's about to really change up. Kassara Nasara is about to get rolled out, things are happening. So don't freak out, because it's all been scripted. I told you it's a movie, it's all unfolding now, it's already done, everything's already done. <clears throat> Now it's just a matter of showing everybody else what's been happening. Oh, and it's going to get even crazier, so. It's almost Halloween. I hope you guys have a happy Halloween. And I will catch you on the flip side. Namaste. Namaste.